The BMW Doncaster Handicap has drawn a field of champions to charge over the famous Randwick Mile. And the whips will be cracking as Australia's best three-year-olds carve up a million dollars in prize money in the HAC Derby. Plus, we'll put one of our lucky viewers fair and square in the winner's circle when we part with that $40,000 BMW 316i Compact in our special Easter Carnival Memorable Moments giveaway. So join us in the enclosure as we sample all the fashion and the glamour, meet the trainers and the hoops, and witness a fortune in horse flesh racing for a place in history at Royal Randwick on Easter Saturday, right here on the one and only Wide World of Sports. Hello and happy Easter to all our Wide World of Sports fans. Welcome to Royal Randwick on Doncaster Derby Day. It's a little bit wet, but it's one of those occasions when racegoers and the sporting public in general are inspired by the prospect of witnessing a piece of turf history. Maxie must remind you a little bit about home, does it, the weather out there? Yeah, well, there's a bit about Melbourne here, and I, I no doubt there's going to be a bit of tinier around, but I think despite all that, it's going to be a great day. As long as they're getting a bit of this uh, rain west of the Blue Mountains, because they really do need it. Yes, we hope you folks out there are getting some rain, and yes, all the great racing stables are out in force today as well. And when it comes to calling the action, there's no better stable than the wide world of sports team. The Wizard of Odds, Ken Callender, and the Prince of Callers, Johnny Tapp. Good on you, Max. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special Wide World of Sports coverage on Derby Day, 1995. You know, every time I get a bit uh, embarrassed when my tips are not racing so well, I simply think about the weather forecasters and I feel better. Once again, they've got it wrong with a dismal old day in Sydney. So much so, Ken Callender, the track has already been downgraded to dead commiserations to the Australian Jockey Club. Yeah, it is a shame, John, but I think most of the heavy rain's gone. The sun's trying to peep through and I reckon it'll be a good day before the finish of the day. And uh, there's plenty of good facilities at Randwick, so we'll have a good day, and I hope you have a good day at home in the lounge room. Well, Dane Wynn will be a short price in the derby. Will he vindicate that price? I think so, John. When I think of derbies, I think of uh, Farlap and Tullock, Kingston Town, and I'm hoping in the future we'll think of Dane Wynn in that sort of breath. I think he's an exciting racehorse, and I think he'll show that here at Randwick this afternoon. Yes, he'll be skinny odds, but a winner's a winner. Yeah, and it won't worry him whether it's wet, dry, or in between. A danger, if any. Uh, I did think it was Stony Bay, but I don't think he's as good in the going. I think the Victoria Derby winner Blevick might be the danger now. Well, the Doncaster brings together a capacity field. Luck plays a major part. Hariba's scratching takes a little gloss off the race, although with the rain, of course, uh, uh, he may not have run anyway. Yeah, I don't think he'd have won in the going, John. Uh, mm. I like the Queenslander, a bit like uh, Fatty Vaught, the champion Queenslander. Brave Warrior fits that bill. He'll be well ridden by Chris Munts. And he was off the track all the way last start, went third to Hariba. Was a super run in the rider stakes. I think he can chalk up number one in the Doncaster of 95. Talk to you during the day, mate. Thank you, John. Good luck. Well, it's well documented that Fatty Vorton's primary passion is for rugby league, but uh, hot on its heels, of course, is horse racing. And it's great to have Fatty on board again today. Here he is. Thanks, John. Great day of racing ahead of us here at Randwick. And, of course, the major two races are the Doncaster and the Derby. Got a couple of desperates here. I'd like to give you a tip, Pete. I'm going day and win in the derby, Paul Little start favourite, but um, I think it's the best staying three-year-old in Australia. And Calm Harbour, the top here in the Doncaster, drawn 18, but it's got Mick Dippman on board, that brings him in, has won 13 from 19 starts, good form. Scooby? I don't like agreeing with Peter, but I'm going to, I think Dane will win the derby. Uh, I was a Stony Bay fan and have been all its campaign, but I think the wet might find it out today. And I think Tommy Smith will have a bit of luck in the Doncaster with Barrel. Yeah, it's got the lightweight chance, of course. Well, I'm going for Avedon in the derby. It's a New Zealander with good wet track form. In the Doncaster, I like Snap. Uh, it'll be snapping at the heels all the way down the straight and just kick clear at the end. You think? You were very ordinary last time we did this. You didn't tip a winner. <laughs> That's right. You Nothing will change ordinary. today. But, of course, uh, not only some great uh, horses out here today, but some good-looking women to take us through the fashions on the field. Here's Charlotte Dawson. Thanks, Paul. Yes, it is a little bit disappointing with this weather. It's going to be murder on heels, and inside the bars, the big brims are going to be bumping into each other, but I'm sure we're still going to have a very fun day here. We've got an award going out to the best-dressed woman and the best-dressed man, and a new thing, which is the New South Wales Student Fashion Awards. And you might be able to see behind me some of the entrants. They are crazy. It's really refreshing to see that in Sydney, some really wild fashions. There's a huge celebrity judging panel, and uh, we'll be seeing the result of that later on in the day. Now I'm going to somebody who's in the forefront of fashion. Here's Ian Maurice with all the overnight scores. Charlotte, it's wonderful to have somebody who recognises fashion to introduce me. Thank you and good morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Rugby League... <laughs> OK, 
Okay, a bit over seven minutes to post time for the first event on the card here at Renwick on Derby Day. And time for me to go through the tote board for the first time. Number one sprint by, he's getting out to $4.30. Would have been a bit shorter, except he's got 59 and a half to hump on this uh, track, which is going to be at least dead. We'll know more after the first race. Long Tan is showing $21. Bella Snap, $11. $41 Century Rain. Jovial Prince at $100. Perfect Bound from Melbourne, $4.50. Mind Blast. Loves the edge off the ground, $7.50. Hull Heart is another wet tracker at $5. Well in the market. Junction Star, $15. Our Caliph and Pearling both at $26. Bonsoir, a good run last start at $17. 67 Enjoy Dancing. And Sir Spinner and our Lena are both showing $81. I was originally going to tip the top one, but uh, with the edge off the track, I like Mind Blast. Now, TAB number seven. I reckon it'll run one heck of a race. And with me is Simon O'Donnell. What think you, Simon? Uh, Kenny, I, I think Perfect Bound looks an absolute treat in the yard. It could be a class above them, but on this ground, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to go to, with something with a little bit of wet track form. That's wholehearted, trained by Clary Connors. I think it'll run a pretty bold race. thought you are going to be a bit parochial there and stick to the Melbourne horse. No, no. If it None has some that. wet track form, I'd definitely do it, but I'm not going to now. OK, Mind Blast from me, wholehearted from Simon. There's two other geniuses, or I'd say the two geniuses at the moment, are standing by, Fatty Voughton and Paul, uh, Peter Sterling. Oh, that'll, <laughs> that'll do me, Ken. Good. Ken, I think you're a very, very good judge. I like Mind Blast as well, to be ridden by Justin Sheehan. It's not, come in on the ring, actually, eights into sevens. I love a firmer, and I'll stick with Mind Blast. It'll blow him away. Pete, what do you think? Well, I, I think Simon sounds like he knows what he's talking about. He said it looked a tree in the yard. I'm going sprint by the top. He's 59 and a half is going to be a fair effort, but G Boss, he's riding plenty of winners, got the slipper last week. He's had sh three runs on the track, and he's won twice. When in doubt, back the top weight. I'm with you, Kenny. Go, son. Yep, Mind Blast is my tip. Simon likes wholehearted. Uh, it's clearing up a bit here now, Simon, but it rained at the wrong time when people were leaving home. Yeah, very disappointing. I, I really thought there'd be a bumper crowd today for the good weather, but unfortunately we haven't got the good weather, but it is going to be great racing. And I suppose the people are lucky they've got us at home as well, haven't they, Kenny? Exactly. It'll be a big day in the lounge room, and everyone uh, here at the track is taking off their rain jackets at the moment as we see uh, Bella Snap on the inside in the cerise colours there, and... Uh, it's either wholehearted who, no, it's not, it's bons, Bonsoir and wholehearted are very similar colours here. That's uh, Bonsoir outside him in the yellow with the blue cap and Mind Blast in the uh, white with the uh, pink striped sleeves and the pink cap and uh, Old Caliph just inside them there with the green sleeves. They're the four going uh, round together. Both Bonsoir, who you can see there, and wholehearted race in very similar colours, which would trick a lot of people, but they won't trick Johnny Tap, will they, John? We'll catch Johnny in just a minute as we see the horses mingle behind the 1,400 metre start. Uh, on the TAB at the moment, still favourite at $4.10 now is Perfect Bound in from $4.50. Uh, number one sprint by is still at $4.30 and wholehearted Simon's Mount has just got out of touch to $5.30 while the other one in the market, the horse that Fatty and I have tipped, Mind Blast, is showing at $7.20. Uh, good tight, the Melbourne horse, perfect bounce on. Yeah, it certainly is a good tight. I know Johnny Marr's got a good rap on him, and uh, to bring him up here and uh, this first time going the Sydney way, I suppose that's another question mark against him. So the wet, the Sydney way, a lot of horses fail coming the Sydney way of going after Melbourne. So we'll just wait and see what happens. So probably some safe money, I think, going with the wet trackers. Funny thing, former champion jockey Edgar Britt was telling me before the first race that it's easier for horses to go from the Sydney way of going which is uh, clockwise to the Melbourne way anti-clockwise than vice versa. He thinks it's because when they're young horses, they're always lunged to the left, uh, they're led from the left side, and perhaps that they do that more naturally than the Sydney way. Well, I'm no man to argue with him, I can tell you. He's got a lot more experience than I have, uh, Kenny, and uh, if you're taking his word, that's good enough for me. Yeah, he's not all that sure either, but uh, he thinks they're the reasons. I'll cop his tip. He's been on their back. Uh, a man who's not on their back, but he's got his eye right on them, is Johnny Tapp. John, I was just saying uh, similarities in colours usually uh, between Bonsoir and Hullhearted. Yeah, very close. Uh, the Connors family colours, Ken. Hullhearted yellow, dark blue armbands, dark blue cap. And Bonsoir, who's in a rather cantankerous mood, I might add, is in yellow with dark blue seams and a dark blue cap. They are close, and we'll have to watch them uh, very closely during the running of the event. Bonsoir... Um, very, very cranky going to the barrier. He wheeled around a couple of times with his rider. Well, Jock Gologly today makes his uh, maiden voyage as Wide World of Sports clerk of the course. He's riding former champion galloper Ming Dynasty. And Jocko, it's lovely to have you with us.
No, we've got a problem. Apologies for that, Jock Logley over behind the barrier. But just for the moment, we can't make uh, contact with him. Now, our Caliph moves up. Bonsoir has come up to an inside gate. Sensory rain is about to go in. Our Lena is in the stalls and facing up squarely. Mind blast in the reverse direction. Bellis Knapp is about to be led forward and sprint by the top weight with Glenn Boss on board. Golden Slipper Glenn is about to be led up into the gates. Yes, Glenn Boss, I think he's just about come down off cloud nine. There's Mind Blast um, in the white colours with the pink striped sleeves and striped cap, trained by Kevin Robinson at Berry on the beautiful south coast. Kevin Robinson, who made his name, of course, in harness racing before switching to the gallopers. Mind you, he's been training gallopers for, for probably more than 20 years now with great success. Wonderful horseman, Kevin Robinson. Now, Bellis Knapp and Mind Blast are the two we're waiting on. The others are all in and facing well. I'll just be watching Bonsoir during the running of the race. He was in a... He just didn't seem to have his mind on the job at all going down to the barrier. All he wanted to do was, was run out at every gap he came to. Not a good sign, but he's a very headstrong horse. On his day, though, he can certainly gallop. Now, they're just about there. The line looks good as the last couple go up, and he hits the button, and they're off and racing in the first. Enjoy dancing as the first out and bounce clear of our leaner and hull hearted as away quickly. Mind Blast is being scrubbed along to get into a forward spot, followed by Long Tan Sprint by. Bella Snapper's handy but can't get on the track in the early stages, followed by Jovial Prince and then Purling and a little worse than midfield perfect bound. Sensory Rain well back in the run to the first corner, followed by Sir Spanner Junction Star and our Caliph. And out the back is Bonsoir coming to the crossing at the 800 mark. Enjoy dancing, joined by Mind Blast on the outside and they're going. Going quickly, sprint by, getting the run of the race third, followed by Bella Snap, Hull hearted fifth on the inside of Long Tan, a length and a half to our Lena, then Purling, followed by Jovial Prince, Sensory Rain, perfect bound, a little worse than midfield, and is being scrubbed along at the moment, followed by Sir Spanner, then Junction Star and our Caliph, and four lengths away as Bonsoir. On the turn, enjoy dancing, and Mind Blast on the outside of the joint leaders, two lengths in front of Sprint by, who's had the run of the race, followed by Hull hearted, and then Long Tan, Bella Snap, and purling as they come over the rise. Sprint by went to the lead from Mind Blast, but Hull Hearted quickly gets into second place. Sprint by's got a handy break at the 200 mark. Hull Hearted desperately written as trying to pick him up. Sprint by's holding him at the moment. Darren Beedman throwing everything at Hull Hearted, who's inch by inch bridging the gap, but Sprint by's got too many guns and he'll win. Sprint by beat Hull Hearted. Perfect bound got third, followed by purling our Caliph. Then Long Tan, Junction Star, Mind Blast, our Lena from Enjoy Dancing, Jovial Prince, further back sensory rain and then bonsoir sir spanner and bella snappers run last i thought for two or three strides the pull in the weights would have to make the difference i really thought hull hearted could pick up that leader uh, but try as hard as he did he just wasn't able to to catch sprint by who gave him a heck of a lot of weight sprint by trained by gay waterhouse who's away to a flying start on the first day of the autumn carnival and ridden by golden slipper glenn boss who won the big two-year-old race last saturday on uh, Flying Spur. Sprint by to pay $4.10 and $1.80. Hull hearted gallant in defeat second to $1.60. And a number six third perfect bound to place dividend of $1.80. Uh, well, I really thought the pull in the weights would make the difference, Ken, but he couldn't bridge the gap, Hull hearted. The winner was going to win from the time they jumped, John. I think it was going to win from the time I changed my mind because Sprint by was absolutely cruising in the run. And uh, I don't think there was any doubt uh, from the, the word go to the word stop that uh, Sprint By was going to lose the race. He bounced out in third place. Uh, Mind Blast had trouble in heading him off. Glenn Boss let him go, sat behind him, and really, it was an absolute cruise for this horse with 59 and a half. He won by a length and a half and was never out of second gear. Oh, that's a, an exaggeration. He was out of second gear over the last 150 metres, but he was never going to lose. And Hull Hearted had every chance, just the rising class made a bit of difference. And there, you can see Gay Waterhouse, and of course, Gay is the trainer of the winner sprint by, who was so well ridden uh, by Glenn Boss. And uh, if you backed him on the tote, you've got $4.10 for each dollar. And I reckon if it would have been a good track, you'd have probably been shaping up to odds of closer to 7 to 4, about a $2.80 dividend. So there's uh, a silver cloud at the end of that rainbow. OK, that was the story of race one here on Derby Day. The winner, sprint by Glenn Boss as we take a break and return with more action on the wide world of sports. <laughs> Okay, 
look at the divs in uh, race number one. Sprint by, paid $4.10 for a win, $1.80 for a place. Wholehearted in second place, $1.80. And in third place, perfect bound, $1.80. Okay. We're on the trail of a winner in race number two, and that means that we'd better consult the Oracle of Odds, Ken Callender. Yeah, thanks very much, Max. Uh, race two uh, is a, a very, very good race. The Fernhill Handicap for two-year-olds, a top field of young horses. I might even give you an early tote call, and then I'll tell you what I like. Number one Central Express is showing $21. Recalcitrant, $6.50. Dance Misty for me, $11. Catalan opening at $7.50. $17 credits. $15 Diamond Cluster, $17 Fun Day, Super Slew will handle the going at $7, Vigil at $26, Zoff Coast at $8, Cheeky Pete at $9, Feathers of Gold and Renaissance Prince are both out, $67 Amy Reb, $12 Night Club, $21 Wild Violet, $61 Classy Fella, and the same price Shosky. I don't know whether he'll handle the going because he's never been on it, but I'm very keen here on a horse called Catalan Opening. I've got my fingers crossed that he can handle the wet track. What say you, Simon? I don't think you're going to be far off the mark, Johnny, but uh, Kenny, but I'm very keen on the Melbourne Horse Central Express. I will show a little bit of uh, Melbourne hometown uh, knowledge here. I, I think its win last time at uh, uh, Flemington before it came up here was a very good one. I really think it's going to have the class to get up today. We're in the big smoke now, son, not in some little provincial town. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> I'm going for Capitan Opening. Simon's going for Central Express. What's Fatty going for? Yeah, thanks, Tim. We're dopes, aren't we? we? We didn't pick Sprint by in the last race, which is tragic, but I'm a Bet Busters fan. This is a little thing that we get uh, sent down to us, Pete and I, and uh, it tips Sprint by, and I'm going to stick with their tip in this race. Fun day. Robert Thompson's going to ride it. Pete, what about you? I'm going with Calcitrance. Uh, tough race, this one, but I, I think the mile will suit it. Pretty good fourth to Catalan opening last start. G Cooksley on board, out of the Hawks stable. Number two. Well, a fun day wins. We'll have a fun day. Back to you, Kenny Sutcliffe. <laughs> Thanks, Fatty. It's only a short gallop down the road from Royal Randwick to the Sydney Football Stadium. Be Doncaster today. Very exciting, says Gay, chewing a lolly. Sorry about that. <laughs> now, with this rain about, what effect will it have on your chances, first of all, in the derby with, with Stony Bay? Well, I think it'll be good on all the horses here. A lot of the horses in Sydney have been suffering from hard tracks just because we haven't had any rain. So it's a nice cushion. It's a nice, nice bit of uh, give in the ground. All right, and you've got a strong hand at the Doncaster. Who will be the strongest? Well, if I tip you one horse, the other will get off. Uh, this morning, looking at them at Randwick, Barrel looked sensational. Uh, all our mob looked fantastic. Light Up the World's very strong and will be rattling home. And Pharaoh, of course, is last year's winner, and he's done everything right this preparation. If I tip you one, the other one will get up. But I do think we'll fight the finish up. All right, Gay, well done with Sprint by. I hope it's the first of a handful. Thank you very much. Gay Waterhouse, a winner's grin, and always does pretty well in the fashion stakes. Very different, too. The mighty Dane Wen is preparing to take on Australia's best three-year-olds in the derby. We'll hear what his trainer has to say on that score a little later. <laughs> About it, here's Ken Callender with the latest market on race two. Yeah, thanks, Maxie. Things haven't changed much, but we'll have a look at them. Number one Central Express is still showing at $21. Uh, Recalcitrance at $6.50. He ran a good race in the wet in the Silver Slipper, so he should handle it. Dance Misty for me is showing $11. Catalan Opening has come in already to $6.50, and I think you'll find he'll come in a good bit yet. He won't be paying at that price. $17 credits. Diamond Cluster, beautifully bred by Sir Tristram for Diamond Shower, is showing at $15. Number seven Fun Day at $17. Uh, $7 exactly for Super Slu, Vigil at $26, Zoff Coast at $8, Cheeky Pete has got out a fraction to uh, $10 now, Feathers of Golden Renaissance Prince of Scratchings, Emma Rev at $67, Nightclub at $12, Wild Violet $21, Classy Fella $61, and Shosky out to $67. Kenny Sutcliffe, they're the prices with still 20 minutes to post time. But in the meantime, we've got the band all going fairly strongly out the back there, Maxie, and they did that just for us, I think. It is all happening, eh? A real buzz. <laughs> After the controversial start of the new Formula One season in Brazil a fortnight ago, when Michael Schumacher and David Coulthard were both disqualified, but subsequently their one-two placings were reinstated, drivers and teams were looking for a smoother ride in round two. Yeah, plenty of drama there, Ken, the Grand Prix of Argentina. Back at Rearwick, and there's a beautiful flower as we get a good uh, view of the grandstand 
uh, of the horses parading before the start of the Fernhill Handicap, which is race two. And this is the race last year it was won by Danewin, who's emerged as a three-year-old star of 95. It's a race that continually throws up good horses. Horses like Bozam have won the Fernhill Handicap on their way to greatness. But uh, this year, well, there's some promising horses, and I think we might get a couple of good ones out of this crop. At the moment, uh, the punters are settling for the horse we tipped earlier, number four, Catalan Opening, who has come into about $6.30 on the TAB. Let's go through them all for you again. Number one, Central Express has come in a little bit now, showing a bit better than $17. Recalcitrance in from $6.50 to $6. Number three, Dance Misty for me, is out to $12. Catalan Opening almost down to $6 as well. Uh, Credits is getting out a little bit in the market to $21. Diamond Cluster TAB number six is still showing at $15. Fun Day is showing at $17. Super Slew TAB number eight, who looks quite well, is showing at $7. Vigil at $26. Number 10 is off coast from Melbourne at $8. The bit of rain won't hurt him. Cheeky Pete is showing at $10. Feathers of Gold is a scratching. Renaissance Prince is a scratching. 67 Amy Reb. Night Club at $12. Wild Violet at $21. And the bottom two, Classy Feller and Shosky, both still at $67. With me here in the enclosure is Simon O'Donnell, of course. Uh, the Melbourne Philly Central Express looks quite well, Simon. Well, from the bird's eye view we get here in the uh, in the parade ring, I, I really think it uh, looks an absolute treat. And I'm not going to change my mind, although I do agree with you that uh, Super Slew does look very well, Kenny. Super Slew looks well? You just wanted me to say su Super Slew. <laughs> I, I would never <laughs> do that to you, mate. And I think Catalan Opening looks well as well. And uh, Jock Galogli? You were uh, our uh, clerk of the course for the day, enjoying your duty? Yes, Ken, uh, very much so. I knocked up a bit the first race, but I'll dapple up from now on in. He was complaining earlier, old Jock, about he wanted a raincoat on. They wouldn't let him put one on, and he seems quite happy now to me. <laughs> what about the jocks? What did they think of the track? Uh, they said it's definitely dead, Most uh, and uh, a majority said on the worst side of dead. On the worst side of dead, eh? So, uh, yeah, that's the impression I got watching it too, though. We're just uh, getting into it a little bit in the last 200 metres. They said there was no bias, Ken, from the first race anyway, but on the worst side of dead, definitely. We'll find that out later on. John Tapp, what did you think of the first race? Well, Ken, I thought Hull Hearted with the big pull in the weights uh, was every possible hope of overhauling that leader. Uh, but as you said, Sprint By looked to be travelling like a winner on the turn, and that's the way it turned out. But they beat the others a long way. The third place get a perfect bound, I thought was under pressure 800 metres out and uh, plugged home well but was never a hope now runners are about to be uh, called onto the track for the second event the hickman's fern hill handicap it's a listed race for two-year-olds and it's the first time uh, that we see the two-year-olds race over the 1600 meters journey and as ken pointed out earlier uh, this race traditionally comes up with good horses last year dane win won the fern hill he's favorite for the derby today march hare in 1993 uh, a subsequent group one winner uh, Marimbula Bay, back in 88, won the Fern Hill Handicap, went on to win a Doncaster 12 months later, uh, 12 months to the day. What about Bo Zam in 87, went on to win a Tancred Stakes and an AJC Derby. He was a super horse. Sound Horizon won this race in 86. He went on to win an Epsom. Handy Proverb, 1985, he went on to win a Victorian Derby. And way back to 1970, what do you think won the Fern Hill Handicap? One of the all-time greats. The Gunda Windy Grey Gun Sind was a very impressive winner of this race. 1600 is a good test, uh, and we, we just get some idea out of this race as to the likely stayers uh, for uh, this time next year. The horses we'll be looking for in races like the Canterbury and Rose Hill Guineas and the AJC Derby of 1996. So it's a race that you should watch closely, you should watch it analytically, and you should watch it from uh, a down-the-track viewpoint. Now that horse on the screen at the moment in the bright green and white diamonds is Credits, trained at Newcastle by Paul Perry, and he won a Class 1 last time out over 1,200 at Newcastle. Uh, Ken, the price on offer would indicate that he's going to be battling to win this. Uh, yes, John, uh, I don't think Credits is quite up to these, although uh, he will handle the going, which has got to be a plus. He uh, rattled home one day at Warwick Farm, uh, which... Uh, the state of the track will help him. It's not a bog by any means, as uh, Jock Gologby told you earlier. It's only uh, just affected. It's dead, uh, but on the worst side of dead. So let's say dead verging on slow. There hasn't been any rain here at Randwick now for about an hour, so that's a, that's a good point. And uh, uh, some of the horses by Carp's dead, the sire of Catalan opening, don't handle the going, but I'm going to hope that this one is an exception. With about eight minutes to post time, I think it's an opportune time for us to take a break and then we'll come back and see all the action in the Fernhill Handicap of 1995.
Okay, and there behind the barrier is number two recalcitrance alongside Catalan opening. They're the two, uh, two of the favourites. Uh, Catalan opening in the yellow sleeves and the black and white checks to be ridden by Larry Cassidy. And recalcitrance uh, is trained uh, by John Hawkes and is ridden today by Grant Cooksley. I haven't seen recalcitrance look better this time in. And a significant point is that he handled a slow track uh, in the run just behind the place getters in the silver slipper last October. And if they show they can handle it once, they normally do it a second time. A few changes on the totes. We'll go down them again. Central Express is showing $17. Recalcitrant $6.50 exactly. Dance Misty for me is out the $13. Catalan opening is now into $4.80. Odds of about 15 to 4, just less than 4 to 1. Credits at $21. Diamond Cluster number 6 is getting out a little to $17. The same price fun day. Number 8 Super Slew at $7.00. Vigil is showing at $26. Zoff Coast at $8, almost out to $8.50. Cheeky Pete is showing at $12, out to $14, uh, almost $15. Feathers of Gold and Renaissance Prints are both scratchings. Uh, Amy Reb, which is Berrima spelled backwards, is showing at uh, almost $100 now. Night Club is at, in at uh, $10 solid. Another of the John Hawks team, Darren Beedman, the rider of her. Wild Violet at $26. Uh, number 17, Classy Fella, and 18, Chosky, both at $81. Right, they're over behind the barrier, as we saw them a moment ago. Uh, still $4.70 now on the, on the tote for Catalan opening. Uh, I, think, I think we've got an interview coming up. Andrew Voss is standing by. I think he's got leading trainer John Hawks. Here's Andrew. Ken, I'm with leading trainer John Hawks. Ken, you've got a couple, or John, rather, you've got a couple of chances in this race. Recalcitrance and, and nightclub, which is the best? Yeah, I think they're much, uh, not much between them. Maybe Recalcitrance a touch better, but now the track's a bit soft. I think it'll help nightclub. And later on in the Doncaster, why kick a Mukau, a rough chance? Well, most probably. He's raced us perhaps a little below form, but now with this thing out of the track, I think that just helps him a little bit more. And, and Hariba coming out, you know, just so, you know, he's most probably has got some rough chance. Well, maybe Monday will be your day in the size produce. Well, we're hoping so. We haven't had much luck the last week or so, but you never know. What goes around comes around. Good luck, John. Thank you. John's horse, a recalcitrance, Grant Cooksley, uh, in the blinkers. A little bit headstrong, this horse, but he's uh, a pretty good race horse. And uh, I think the 1,600 metres at Randwick will suit him. Recalcitrance is the son of Kenny Ladd, a horse that Simon O'Donnell will remember well. Uh, beaten in the Blue Diamond, but come up here and cleaned up the Sydney Siders in the Golden Slipper. Certainly do you remember was. Kenny Led? Certainly do. Uh, Kenny, uh, Rick or Lacey had him down at Epsom. Oh. He was a very, very smart horse, and I think with Will, you know, Rick Colston to really set him up to be a pretty, pretty much a boom sire. Yeah, uh, he, his first crop have done very well. Uh, the oldest horses by Kenny Ladd are only two-year-old this year, and uh, Rick Calcitrance is a member of that uh, uh, first crop. There's Wild Violet with Glenn Boss aboard. Boss, of course, rode the slipper winner last week and rode the first winner here today. Uh, Super Slew was just going in behind him in the red colours for uh, uh, Shane Dye. Black with the white star and the white cap over there with the clerk of the course uh, is a second set of John Hawke's colours, and that would be night club uh, Darren Beedman. Uh, riding the other Hawks runner. Uh, 1,600 metres this, the same distance as the Doncaster. It might give you a guide to that. There's Dance Misty for me. She's up.